When you signed for Leicester, did you envisage for one minute that you would win the league? Not even a percent, mate. Amazing. Leicester City! Mate, it was at the top of the world, mm. top of the mountain. We were all probably a load of misfits put together, really. Mm. Uh, or rejects. The underdogs. Know. Are you proud of yourself? Because I think you should be. Oh, probably not. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not really good at taking compliments. Mm. Imagine being you playing for Manchester United at that age. And we're talking about in the golden era, like with Wayne Rooney, Ronaldo. Like you said, you're just there looking at them and it's starstruck. Mm. Of course you are. And it's something that I've done for 10 years of my life. But when you get in that moment, you've got to, you just feel like you've got to take that chance. It's, it's in how many kids want to try and play for United. There's this is one in, you know, how many millions. I don't feel like people know the real me, you know, and I'm not just party boy Simo. Mm. You know, there's other sides, but I, I, it's up to me to try and show people that mm. I, I see you doing it, so why can't I do it? Now then, we are back with a brand new episode of Learning As I Go. But before we introduce our next guest, I just want to say thank you because so many of you are coming on this journey with me. We are doing the sprint triathlon together in Sunderland on the 29th of July. So thank you for tagging me in all your stories. I'm gassed and I can't wait to share my updates with you along the way. But today we have a Premier League winner in the building. We've managed to do it. We've had a word with the managers at B on the transfer window and we've got him in the studio. This guy has achieved so much. He started off at Manchester United and played with the likes of Ronaldo, Rooney, Rio Ferdinand, and he went on to win the league with Leicester. Today, I'm introducing Danny Simpson, and this is going to be one hell of a chat. Stay tuned and get ready to learn another life lesson with learning as I go. Danny Simpson! Premier League winner in the building. Get ready for this. I'm a bit nervous, but... Don't be nervous, mate. Yeah, yeah. You just show up, show up. Here we go, learning as I go. Series three. Where's the energy? We've got Danny. We've got Danny Simpson in the building. <laughs> I can't believe we finally happened. We finally made it happen. Um, we've been around the houses trying to make it. I feel like it's been like the transfer window trying to get Danny Simpson yeah, yeah. into the studio. Um, and this is a special moment for me, Danny, because obviously every time I'm around you, um, we've become a lot closer over the last few yeah, years. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But I'm a little bit starstruck, man, because of what you've been through and what you've achieved in your career. Like you've you've achieved winning the Premier League, obviously with Leicester, when everybody thought it was impossible. But even before that, I remember the first time I saw you, and it was when you walked into Sugar Lounge, right? Um, I don't know what year it was. It was years ago, mate. Yeah. Sugar Lounge in Manchester, that was a place to be. Yeah. And you walked in in a bright red tracksuit, I'm pretty sure, a bright red outfit with Brad Howard. Sounds about right. Yeah. And, and everybody <laughs> said, there, there's Danny Simpson from Man United. And I just remember thinking, oh my, because you're a similar age to me. Yeah. I was thinking, imagine being you, playing for Manchester United at that age. And we're talking about in the golden era, like with Wayne Rooney, Ronaldo. Um, it was such a strong team, Rio Ferdinand. Yeah. But talk me through the start of your career at United. What happened? How did you get to that point? Well, even just that there. Uh, listen, thanks for having me on, by the way. <laughs> yes! I feel like you've, you've signed me up. <laughs> uh, finally, on deadline day. <laughs> there we go, we got you in. Um, so, yeah, no, I'm happy to be here. Obviously, if I, obviously, I've known you a long time and you know, you know how much love I've got for you. Um, but yeah, no, like you talked about the players there, you know, R Rooney, Ronaldo, Skulls, Rio Ferdinand. Um, you know, that was when you know, I was trying to get into the first team. Um, listen, just them, just, just, just being around them as even now at this age has probably shaped my life mm. um, in terms of what I learned from them as professionals and as probably as men as well. Um, but yeah, going back to like, you know, even going back, just did the whole Man United thing for me was, it wasn't just about, oh my God, like you're saying, oh, you play for Man United. Um, I I didn't feel like I did play for United because I was trying to get there. Right. Um, and it ended up with that club as a whole, um, you know, the way they look after players, ex-players even now, you know, even at 14, it looked after me when I was 14, you know, when I, people were saying I'm too small, I'm not good enough. Um, and that club's a special club where they always believe in certain people and characters. Mm. And they obviously saw something in me in terms of my personality and my character that gave me a chance. And, you know, they ended up giving me another year where I was to, to see if I would develop into a, a, a different player or what they thought. And not many people do that. And if they would have sacked me off at 14, God knows where I'd be today. And, yeah. 
you know, I'm thankful to that club that they saw some of it in me, not just uh, as a as a footballer, but as a you know a character. But what age did you actually start at United? Like, what was the entry level? Yeah, I was I was 12 wow. when I started. So imagine the um, start of high school, and you know. You, you're in high school telling everyone you play for my United. That is mad. Like, you know what I mean? So, I, I remember being in school and someone said they play for United. Yeah. You were like worshipped. Everybody like remembers those people from school. And obviously being part of that club at that time, was it like a fairy tale for you as a young lad? Yeah, it was because you said you, 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 it's like anything people like attention. I don't care. <laughs> we're human at the end of the day. Um, so I'm going into school every day and... Listen, I, I was a good kid at school. I mean, from from parents and stuff. And United again, they 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 gave you rules where you know if you weren't good, then you didn't play at the weekend, um, and they were pretty strict with that. Um, but no, nah, listen, as you go in every day, people are. Oh, that you said that. That isn't. Oh, you playing for United? But I didn't play for United. Um, I was trying to play for United and learning my trade and trying to. Uh, and I was watching the class of '92, for example. Mm. That was my always my fingers. Look at them lads from Manchester. Look mm. what they're doing. I want to do what they're doing. Mm. So that was always my driving force from in school because I wanted what they had. Mm. But when you say you didn't play for United, do you mean because you didn't play for the first team? Mm. So basically, even if you play for the youth team, you didn't really class that as playing for United? Yeah, because <laughs> we all pretended that we did, but because we walked around and represented the club in a way. Um, but... You know, like like many people, and I could have been one of them. I could have played for United at a certain age, and then they could have released me, and I never played for United. Mm. <laughs> um, as in terms of first team game official, uh, on my you know they can't take that away from me. Mm. That's on my you know they're on the stats. It's on there, um, and you know people could be sat saying, "Oh, I played for United, but for ten years, but actually never play a game." Mm. So that was always my driving force, really, to get into that first team and get a game with mm. them players. Talk to me about the pressure though, as a young kid then. Like you, you, you're associated to Man United. You pretty much label the Man United player everywhere you go, like you said. Talk to me about the pressure about getting into the first team. Like you said, you mentioned then that basically as a kid, you were quite small. And because you were small, um, they gave you a second chance at United. Did they put you down a year or something? Yeah, yeah. So they, they you know, and, and you know, that was quite tough to deal with. That they, you know, Most of my team got the least. Um, and we had a meeting, I remember it like it was yesterday, we had a meeting with the, with Paul McGuinness, et cetera, and the people that are there. And they said, look, we're going to give you another year, but you're going to have to stay down a, a year. Mm. So as happy as I was, you know, I felt like it was it was quite, still tough to take. Mm. Uh, it was quite embarrassing that I had to then go and join, you know, lads a year below. You'll know some of them, like the Fraser Campbells, the Johnny Evans. That's why we're friends with Aaron Burns. That's why we're friends with some of them. Because I spent another year with them as the older lad, and it was quite embarrassing oh, to be really? honest. Really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, but I got a I got another chance, and uh, I felt like I owed it to them and myself because not many people get that second chance, and and luckily I did, and eventually I got my head around it, you know. But um, and and I said I, I got my head down, and thankfully it slowly started to pay off their, their decision. So talk to me about that defining moment for you then when you did get the call up to the first team. Yeah, look, listen, it was, I remember there's the first day you, you get sent over to the first team pitch. <laughs> <laughs> and you've got, you know, we have these boxes, you know, two boxes, you know, two, like one touch. Honestly, I've never been so scared in my life, I swear <laughs> to God. And this is the thing, you see these people every day in the, on the building, breakfast, lunch, canteen, they're everywhere, but... You know, and, but these are the people you've watched on TV win yeah. trophy after trophy for years. You know, like gods, man. Yeah, exactly. And like I said, we're all United from, well, not all, but yeah. you know, we grew up in a United area. Yeah. And I'm there and it's like, and you're so scared. Like, you feel like you can't kick a ball anymore all of a sudden. <laughs> Legs are jelly. Um, you, you, you're wondering what they're thinking of you. You know, is he, is he shit or is he not? But talk to me about the, the kind of players then. So you basically got asked to go and play with the big boys, basically. Yeah, yeah. And you go over to this box. Like, what kind of players are, you, are we talking about here? Like, you well, they have with? young and old, innit? So yeah. I, my, my box was Rooney, Ronaldo, uh, Nani, PK. What? Um, what? I think even then it was like probably John O'Shea. Where's Browns? Like, you know, these are superstars. Do you know what I mean? Um, 
Tevez, luckily, I think Rio might have still been in that young box yeah. actually. No offense to Rio, yeah. by the way. <laughs> um, but yeah, and 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 then obviously over there was you know your senior players, your gigs, your scores, and yeah, like I said it's, it's you're in a young box and you make make you feel a bit more comfortable. But like you said, you're just there looking at them, and it's you're starstruck. Mm. Of course, you are, and it's something that I've done for ten years of my life. But when you get in that moment, you've got to, you just feel like you got to take that chance, mm. um, whether it's training or a game. Because you might not get it again, and you just you just think everything. You're just thinking, overthinking everything, trying to make sure you show a good impression, make the right impression, do the right things. Because it's it's that's how many kids want to try and play for United. There's this is one in you know how many millions. But this is what I'm talking about. Like I'm not a diehard football fan, but if I could achieve one thing in life or have th that feeling, it would be like scoring. Um, in front of like a massive crowd at Old Trafford yeah. or even just playing in a game like that. Every young kid wants to do what you did, like playing yeah. with Ronaldo, playing with Rooney. Like I'm just trying to envisage how you actually felt. And I know that you, there was a massive game, wasn't there, when you came on for the first team? And there's yeah. a picture in your house, which I, I always get yeah, gassed every time I see that. it. It's yeah, like, yeah, I think have... it's you, Ronaldo. And, and Evra. Ever. And Evra. Yeah, you and basically, like that, don't you? I love that picture. <laughs> and basically, you came on. Was it your debut? Or? Yeah, it was Premier League debut. Yeah. Premier League debut. You came on and you set up, was it Ronaldo? Rooney, yeah. Or Rooney? Rooney. Yes, yeah, so obviously, I've, I mean, I'm finally on the bench, first team, Wigan at home, 70,000. Um, come on. Uh, I can't remember what the score was. And then, Obviously, you were talking there about people going up wanting to score a goal on their debut. or um, And I'm a defender, so you know I just wanted to have a good game. But the next best thing for me was obviously setting up a legend or a superstar. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, it's weird because if it's like a, something you read in a book or a fairy tale. It's Paul Scores gets the ball, slides Danny Simpson in, <laughs> he takes a touch, <laughs> delivers it, Wayne Rooney, header, goal. And then everyone, obviously, everyone runs over, and that's the pitch you've seen where, like I said, Ronaldo and Ray even Scolzi, like I just can't get my head around it. I mean, I'm, I know I'm fanboying here. This is what I'm talking about, like the yeah. experience, that experience for you. Mm. Like I said, it's one in a million that people get to do that kind of stuff. Yeah. And we'll talk on what you like, obviously, what you went on to achieve after that. Yeah. But how do you stay grounded in those moments? Like, obviously, you're a young lad. But, you've gone done, done that at the debut. You've probably gone out into town afterwards and everything else. How did you stay grounded? And the reason why I ask you this, Danny, is because me and you have been come close over yeah. the last few years. But one thing I always remember about you is we actually used to clash a lot on nights out and everything yeah, else, didn't we? Yeah. For whatever reason. <laughs> Probably because I've been a, a bit <laughs> no, no. Um, But what I mean is, you, I remember you kind of always had your guard up. You always had your guard up. To get in your circle mm. was very difficult. And I, I related to my big brother, Ryan, because yeah. um, he was a bit of a, like a, I call an old school celebrity where back then being a celebrity wasn't as accessible. So people did have the guards up because people would exploit you, the yeah, media, yeah. everything else. And I just know with you, you definitely had your guard up and you only had a small circle. Like obviously we talk about Brad, Brad was like your best mate and yeah. he used to speak really highly of you all the time, but no one else could get near you. Like in terms of how did you stay grounded? Was it by keeping yourself in a small circle? Yeah, listen, you, you, it's, it's in a high pressure um, situation and a lot of people expect a lot of you. Now I'm not talking about like you said, people out my circle. I'm talking about family. You know, you know they 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 have a lot of pressure. Um, <laughs> you know the family because all of a sudden you play one game for Man United and you know people are expecting your mum all of a sudden to be driving around in a in a Range Rover. Yeah. You know, and that's what and that's their side of what they had to deal with. Going to their normal job, like, and then I remember, you know, people thinking, "Well, why are you working here? You're Danny Simpson's mum." Wow. You know, and that, and that, something that you, you, they, they try and keep away from you, but that's just one side of things where you got all this pressure, and all you're trying to do is train and play football mm. and enjoy what 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 you love. Um, and like you said, they're trying to balance that and the pressure and 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 then agents and. You know, people trying to maybe take advantage and stuff. Cashing on you, basically. Yeah, yeah, and and you don't know to trust, etc. And I said it, and all you and all you want to do is be a kid that plus playing football and mm. all this other stuff starts to come. And like I said, then the money and extra and all that comes in. And sometimes, you know, it, it was sometimes for me, you know, it was a case of shutting the door and 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 and, and having a drink. Mm. Um, 
and that was just sometimes my release from mm. from the pressure which I felt was 24-7 really mm, that's interesting I know we're, we're going to go and talk about that a lot more um, later down the line but before we move on from United mm. talk to me a little bit about Alex Ferguson um, because obviously everybody looks up to him as one of the best leaders of all time yeah. what was he like and what kind of impact did he have on your life Listen, he, 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 the key word there is leader. He, he was just a leader of people, not just footballers, people. Like how, listen, how how he, he was as a, as a person, how he treated people, not just like, like I said, not just his players who, who he relies on to perform for him, but like the staff, people behind the scenes that we don't know about, the kitchen ladies, the, the cleaners, the, the people who do the kit. You know, the the woman at the um, reception, this lady called Kath that everyone in the whole of Manchester knows. <laughs> um, you know, she was like our grandma, do you know what I mean? It was mm. just the way you watch him, like, treat people, what he knows about you, he knows about, he's always taking an interest in, and and I feel like, he, I think people will realise he got the best out of people um, just by actually caring about them. Mm. I swear, like, mm. yeah, we can have all these tactics and, Oh, you better run harder, Scott. You only mm. done seven k today. You do, I need you to be running eight k. It wasn't even that. It, him, it was, it was, it was how he treated people um, and his manners and his, his said his morals, his ethics, and 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 treat people how he wanted to be treated, mm. and and that, that creates that family environment. And then you you want it's like you want to do well for your dad. Yeah, <laughs> you do. You don't want to let your dad down, and and that that's something that he. You know, we was very, very good at like up here and getting players ready and getting the team ready. Mm, I find it really interesting because obviously, I, I, I like to call myself a leader, yeah. especially within my businesses and everything else. But the hardest thing in business, I think, for example, is managing people, yeah. um, because everybody has their own individual thoughts and needs and desires, and to keep everybody happy all the time, especially when I'm spinning so many different plates, is one of my biggest challenges. So the fact that someone like Alex Ferguson can remember everybody's mm -hmm. name um, in his kind of, in the full setup at Old Trafford, is beyond me when he's spinning so many plates and that pressure on, on him. So I think it's really kind of a credit to the man that he is, that he takes the time to do that and that's how he leads. Yeah, and well, the two people that affected my life the most in terms of in football was, Obviously, so Alex, who I've said, he, he was, he was, he was like that around with people, and that's that, and the man and managing people, and uh, and Vichai, um, who was the owner of, of Leicester City, who obviously unfortunately had the accident with the helicopter, um, which was a sad time, but he was exactly like Sir Alex. Now he wasn't a manager, but he, well, he was the chairman, mm. so he was still a manager. He managed people, and how he, he was the same. How he. What he, how he made people feel, and what he created at Leicester, and it was was him and the way he treated people, the fans. Not he wasn't coming in. It wasn't just players. It was the fans, the staff. He had time for everybody. You know, he's, this is a billionaire. You know, <laughs> um, and he'd come in and and he would take, even if it's just a minute, just to ask someone how you are. You know what I mean? Mm. He doesn't take much. It doesn't cost you anything yeah. to, to to ask someone how you are, and that goes a long way in managing people and business and mm. being successful. That's what I've seen with them too. Yeah, and I can just see your eyes light up when you talk about yeah. these kind of people. And I know that um, that your Leicester boss as well. He's the mm. one who gave you that chance and really believed in you at one point, didn't he? As well, but look, well, well, yeah. I can't wait to get yeah, to Leicester. Yeah. But one last question before we move on from United is Ronaldo. Um, <laughs> Because I know now you said that basically the way that he trained mm. and the way that he approached football inspired you, especially later on in your career when you went on to win the league with uh, Leicester. Mm. But we hear rumours all the time about how kind of driven he was and um, professional. Are the rumours true? What was he like in training? Mate, he's, the rumours are more than true. Mm. <laughs> um, no, the, the dedication. I, you know, at the time... Probably didn't realise it as much. I, I I was logging it. I was clocking it. Mm. Um, but part of me was just thinking he's naturally good. I wasn't. Then when I look back, I wasn't thinking. No, he's he's working at every part of his game. Mm. The weak parts. Some people are scared to work on the weaknesses, and he would work on his weaknesses. 
his weak foot, his this, his that. And at the time, he wasn't really good at heading a ball. And now he's ended up one of the best headers in the world. Mm. Probably got the most goals from heading. And I remember when he first come, he wouldn't, he, he wouldn't head anything. <laughs> um, and like I said, yeah, it was every day in the gym. Like I said, extra, extra, you know, whether it was 10 minutes, 30 minutes. And I look back and I think, I said, I've had a great career, but I look back and I think, ah, maybe I should have done that, you know. Mm. Um, I wouldn't have ended up like him, but, you know, mm. it was, and, and, and then, even then I think we, we, we would call it being a bit busy. Like, oh, right, right, you know, he's been a bit extra sometimes in that culture, but he didn't care about that. He knew what he wanted and he knew what needed to be done. And it weren't just on the beach, it was off it, his diet. He was the first one. He, yeah, obviously not, not everyone can afford you know, all these chefs and all that, but he was, his diet, he didn't drink everything. He was sleep properly, uh, recover right. And I think he was the start of the new generation that started to change how everyone else treated their bodies and their their minds to, to perform at their best. And he passed that on through, through, through the club. I think that's really interesting what you mentioned about he worked and focused on his weaknesses. Yeah. Um, because it is dead easy, for example, to go to the gym. I, when I go to the gym, <laughs> I love tra I love training chest and back. Yeah, yeah because yeah. I, I find them easier. Yeah, you've training shown legs, me that. You've mate. Shown me that a few times. <laughs> training legs, hence why I've got no calves, <laughs> is always just a big like. It's just a slot for me, right? And but when I do do it, I feel that big sense of achievement. But it's almost like I'm ticking a box. Yeah. But I reckon someone like Ronaldo will be like, do you know what? I'm going to focus on training them legs twice a week yeah. because that's my weak area. And that, I think that's the difference between levels of um, being the best in your field. Do you know what I mean? Making sure that you become that rounded. I don't know. If, for example, if, I'm, if I want to be a leader, which I want to be, mm. it's, all right, it's great leaning into the areas that you are really good at. But I think being aware of your weaknesses and I think even with business, I know, for example, there's certain areas of business that I, I'm not really good at. So, for example, finances or even operations. So I automatically know, yes, I need to get better at them. But at the same time, is I think one of my biggest skills is making sure that I'm aware that I need those people around me to support me. And I think it's kind of leaning on what you said about um, Ronaldo there. I, just, I love the fact that you said he focused on his weaknesses and made sure that he got better rather than just leaning to what he's good at. Yeah, and I think, to don't, don't, don't be embarrassed to... to, to show you weaknesses or work on them. Mm. You said, there, you know, sometimes you might go to the gym and you might not do your legs today. Cause, but like I said, it's, you know, in football, it was like, oh, I'm not going to shoot with my weak foot because I'm scared that everyone's going to laugh when I miss. Mm. <laughs> well, not if you yeah. keep working on them. Like I said, I'm, you know, I, I, I've got loads of weaknesses that I, I know coming out of football a little bit that I now need to work on because I'm now in this new world mm. um, where you're in a football bubble and some of the things are done for you. Mm. Now all of a sudden, I feel like I'm this, yeah. like I'm born like some new guy in this new <laughs> world, mate. It's weird. You know, like putting myself out there and speaking and meetings and listen, I just trained, went home, slept, had everything done for me, had the calendar, be at this time here, there, we're traveling here, we're going to be this stadium, this hotel, this track, this train. Now it's like, I'm not saying, oh God, yeah, it was, yeah, it was amazing. Then you come out and, I'm, and now I'm only having to do things that everyone does on a day-to-day -day yeah. basis. <laughs> uh, and I've got to put myself out there. And like I said, if you don't, like I said, work on your weaknesses or don't be embarrassed by them, you're not going to improve. Yeah, of course. Um, I think it's really interesting as well with footballers because they retire at around the age of like 35. I know it's getting older now because everyone's becoming yeah. more like, I don't know, fitter and healthier. But the fact that you retire at 35 when, for example, now I'm getting to the 35 and I'm like coming into my prime. In your life. Do you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? It's, 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 it's kind of back to front. Yeah. Um, and I know that's been difficult for you. Mm. But before we get to that, I know you, you speak really highly of Manchester United and your experience there. But I know there was a time when obviously you got let go or released mm. uh, and that was really difficult for you to swallow. Um, talk me through that process and how that kind of defined your next moves. Yeah, listen, it's not, listen, we're human. No one likes to be rejected. Mm. <laughs> um, but it's, 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 it's the same thing, isn't it? What, what, uh, what don't kill you makes you stronger. And um, But as a young kid though, thinking that you, you're going to play for Man United all your life yeah. and you've built it up to it on a massive pedestal, and then to be there all your life and then to be told that you've got to move on. And uh, where did you go next after that? I went Newcastle. Yeah. But the thing is, I I just thought this is my life forever. I was twelve at United. 
got to 16, oh, what's happening? Doing my GCSEs. I'm going to go to college, so I'm going to go full-time at United. I went full-time at United. Then it was, oh, I got into the first team. It did okay, did well. Then I just assumed it was just going to keep going like that till I got to 35. And unfortunately, it didn't um, for a number of reasons. Um, that, that some, you know, some are my fault, some are others. But yeah, obviously, leaving the club I grew up at pretty much, spent 10 years of my life there every day with all these people. And you know, it was a club I supported from the area that I'm from. Um, it, it was it was obviously tough and no one likes rejection. <laughs> you know, I probably had a little cry, <laughs> I know mm. I did. Um, because my, my Man United dream was over, but I had to, you know, if I wanted to have a good career, I had to obviously like get over it, deal with it and, and, and maybe get to a point where actually I'm going to prove you wrong. And that was the way I went I went into it. it. was like, right, you let me go. You didn't want me. Um, but I'm going to prove you wrong. And you definitely did that. Yeah. Um, so obviously you went on from there to Newcastle and then you played. For, the one thing I'm really proud about with you, Danny, is that you managed to stay in the Premier League mm. all your career and you went around some top clubs. Where did you play? Just like top line. Yeah, I think for me it was like... I think you know when I when I grew up, so all through that when I went when I watched all these players, Ronaldo, Rooney's, Scholes, he's just win trophy after trophy after trophy, and you're there, just on the outskirts watching them. He can only benefit you, you know. I was fortunate enough that I went to Sunderland, won a trophy, um, went to Newcastle, won a trophy. Okay, all beat the championship. Went to QPR, won a trophy, and then that all set me up to go to Leicester, um, which no one and obviously expected what was gonna happen. Um and won the best trophy in, in the world for me. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I just want to say a massive thank you to British Triathlon for sponsoring this podcast. And I also want to say a massive thank you to you, every single one of you who have signed up to take on the sprint triathlon with me in Sunderland in July. This is gonna be a serious challenge, but it's gonna be a good one. I've not swam in years. I've never been on a road bike. I do a little bit of running, but trust me, I'm coming well out of my comfort zone. So if you are feeling a little bit nervous, it's completely normal. And I haven't even fully started training yet because I've had a little injury, so it's not too late to sign up. We've got plenty of time. So please don't miss out on this opportunity. Bring yourself out of your comfort zone and make the most of my discount code, Learning25, to get yourself signed up to the race. And the link is in the episode notes. But if you're watching this and you're listening, this is your sign. Try something new. Come out of your comfort zone and let's smash this race together. Sorry, I'm just getting flashbacks of uh, we've had a couple of parties at yours, haven't we, over, yeah. the, over the years? And Danny comes down with his, with his, <laughs> with his medals and that. And I'm just like, this guy's won the Premier League. Yeah. You've won the Premier League. Like, that's the biggest accolade. Well, one of the biggest accolades yeah. in football, right? And this, this league is so respected across the whole world. Yeah. And obviously, you went to Leicester. When you signed for Leicester, did you envisage for one minute that you would win the league? Not even a percent, mate. Not even... And even leaving Man United, you see them winning the Premier League. You don't leave United and win the Premier League. It just doesn't happen. I don't know. I don't know who has. Um, so, yeah, you sign there just because you want to continue your career and, and earn some good money and, and play at the highest level. Um, but, you know, to do to do that, mate, it was just, you know, it was just a, a dream come true. And even now, it just gives me goosebumps. You know, even sitting there now, you're in... We spoke about it God yeah. knows how many times, yeah. you know. So, yeah, it's, it was unbelievable. So, at what point through the league then did you realise that you had a chance? When did it start to become really real? And what was the morale like with, like, the team? Like, you know, we talk about teams and teamwork and the atmosphere must have been electric in that dressing room. Like, was it one of the most special feelings of your life? Without doubt. Um, I miss it every day. Mm. <laughs> um yeah, listen, we, we, we were like a band of brothers, that kind of thing. I don't know, that's probably the best way to describe it. Um, where we were all probably a load of misfits put together, really. Mm. Uh, or rejects. The underdogs. Know, the underdogs, rejects. Whatever, whatever, the, whatever the words you want, you can use any of them. And we all had a point to prove. You know, I'm not going to go through the hour because, you know what I mean? But every single one of us had a point to prove. And that just gave us this mad, like, belief um, like, do you know what? Like, why not? Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, and we we went into every day, every game, just believing. And I think that was the biggest word for me is the belief. 
and and you had your mate next to you like holding your hand you know what I mean and you was with him so yeah I said obviously don't get it wrong amazing players but I think the the belief was 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 the biggest word for me for going through that period yeah because you, you mentioned when when you left United there's that sense of you want to prove people wrong and I think yeah. I've had that throughout my life yeah. so when I was like a big party boy in Manchester yeah, and yeah. I felt like people used to judge me yeah and go like do you know what I mean like Oh, he's just he's just an idiot, him. The Scottish special. And it used to kill me because I thought, I'm quite an intelligent guy. Yeah, I've got yeah. so much more to offer. I know you worked hard on that. I know you have. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's took me so long to do it. that. And then even from like being on Love Island, being like you get typecast as a reality star, and especially in business, to move away from that and transit, it's almost like proving people wrong. And even, I'm not going to lie, even some of my ex-girlfriends, yeah. I felt like I've had to prove them wrong as well. Yeah. Um, and that kind of does drive you forward. Do you think that's a healthy way to be like driven forward? Listen, I, I think so. If you if you, if you can use something that pushes you and motivates you to to get what you want or to get to where you want to be, if that's proving an ex girlfriend wrong or an ex friend, an ex boss, you know, um, you know, uh, a certain crowd, like for you, for example, you know. In the Love Islands, you know, scenario, proving that you're not just, you know, this lad on TV um, that was on that kind of show, and I'm a businessman, you mm. know, like you, like you being. Then if you if you use that, um, and it's working for you, then, then yeah, keep the keep it, going, it, keep going with it. It's funny you say that because literally, I think some of my most defining moments have come from some of the most painful moments where mm. I felt like I've had to prove people wrong, and I think if you can channel that pain into something positive. I always say that when someone um, DMs me on Instagram and goes, yeah. oh, mate, I don't know what I should do. My missus just broke up with me. I feel like shit. I'm like, you yeah. know what, mate? Take that pain now yeah, 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 and channel right. it into yes. you. Into you. And when you're shining, you'll start to attract the right people into your life again. And I feel like that really has paid dividends for me. And it sounds yeah. like from leaving United and having that rejection, yeah. you kind of channeled it into the rest of your career and you had such a, a great career. And then you got to the, this pinnacle where obviously you went on to win the league with uh, Leicester. What were, the, what were the odds on that? Like, was it like 1,000 uh, to 1 or something? 5,000 to 1. 5,000 to yeah. 1. So if someone put, five, I'm not going to do the maths, if someone put 5 on that, yeah, is, yeah, that yeah. is that like 25 grand? 25 bags, yeah. So that's mad. I know, mate, for 5 or so. Yeah, look, look, that just goes to show that it was never supposed to happen or, you know, if the bookies put that on, it's not going to happen, is it? Um, and we didn't believe, no one believed, no, we just survived relegation um, through the skin of our teeth. You, you don't then go win the league <laughs> a year later. Like, you just don't. And in in, in sport, um, I don't know where, you know, where else that, that has happened. Um but again, there you you said it's believe proving people wrong, and mm. everyone throughout that season was like was was didn't believe in us, and it just gave us more strength to mm. to actually and let's do it. What would you say was the the key ingredient in, in that team? Um, I, I I personally think our togetherness, um, and like you said, I think everyone not not having going out proving people wrong, every one of us. Um, I remember our team talks, you know, we, it was like, F these or F them, you know, this is us. Now you against the world. Yeah, yeah, basically, yeah. This is perfect, isn't it? That's one of my favourite songs. Yeah. So you pat me against yeah, the world, so mate. Yeah, so, you know, it was, you know, I'm getting emotional now, I think, you know, talking about it. Uh, but it was, and, and that's what we used, and that's what was our driving force. Mm. Do you think as well sometimes, because you are, I, like I love being the underdog, me. You know, yeah. like we've both been playing a lot of paddle recently. Yeah. And I don't like playing with the best players on my team sometimes because you, you don't get the, the kind of validation. You go, well, you just won because you're with him or whatever else. I kind of like being the underdog, but I also, I said to Ollie, who I was playing with this morning, I went, mate, just relax. It's a game of paddle. Yeah. Enjoy the game. And that's when you play better. Do you feel like because you guys were just a bunch of misfits, so to speak, and you were just playing football, that you just kind of, flowed better does that make sense no but like you talk about paddle like <laughs> you have it in you where you want to win or you don't yeah. like, yes listen sport's fun and we want to enjoy it but listen I heard you on the other <laughs> court this morning it's like shouting 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 because <laughs> you wanted to win yeah Um, and like you said you're playing with a partner and I think 
Listen, yeah, we, and ultimately, there's, there's a nice sense of achievement. It doesn't matter whether it's winning a Premier League or winning our game of paddle this morning. Mm. We want to win, don't we? Mm. Um, and 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 learn that we're, we're we're learning it, we're practicing it. We want to get better, mm. uh, and we're not afraid to lose. Yeah. Um, and and I think that's what we can take. Not just sport, take that in in other areas of of our lives. Mm. So you had that winner's mentality. Yeah. So you, so you won the Premier League. What was that feeling like? Because I know we've discussed this previously where you said, even to this day now, you are struggling yeah. to replicate that same feeling of winning the league because it's almost like that Olympic men medal syndrome mm. where basically Olympians talk about when you get that massive accolade, you train all life yeah. for it. And when you get there, it's almost like what's next? And it's almost so great that you, you end up feeling empty afterwards because... You're constantly yeah. chasing that that high again. Yeah, listen, like, like I said, it, apart from it being one of the you know, my dream from when I was first put from football boots on at the age of seven, um, you know, to to you know, to fulfil your dream uh, and every other kid's dream, and then you know I did it, and like even like you said, even now still, it's going to be seven years this summer. Um, how, how do you replicate that 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 raw high emotion, mate? It was at the top of the world, mm. top of the mountain. There's the nowhere. whole country was behind you, right? Yeah, yeah. There's nowhere else to go. Everyone where I went every day. Oh, like, even people that didn't support Leicester, like, what you just wanted us to win, mm. wanted me to win, wanted my teammates to win, and we did it. And then it was like, you know, and I, honestly, credit to the people that stay at the top for so long because. I had it for, you know, a little a little period of time and, you know, I, I don't know how, I, you know, I struggled to try and get that back because, mm. like you said, it was, you know, it was, it was the Olympic medicine syndrome or yeah. whatever you said and I don't know how, you know, to, you get that back and, and, and you said it, it was a one-off, it was a, it was a, so I don't know, it was, it, yeah, I've struggled. Just in general though, Danny, like, from the outside looking in, You've been a Premier League footballer all your life. Mm. You've earned thousands of pounds a week, like, um, and you've lived this amazing life on paper, right? But I know from you personally that you've not always, like, it's not always been plain sailing, and it's weird because people might look at you and go, well, what's he got to worry about? Yeah. He's got all the money in the bank. He's living mm -hmm. his life. He can have any girl he wants. Well, or, or, do you know what I mean? Mm. But I know that you've always had your own struggles. Mm. Talk to me about that. That's me, I've got... I, I like, like, uh, you know, other people in a day to day life. You know, I've, I've got issues like everyone mm -hmm. else, trust issues. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, there was, you know, you, you, you wrapped up in a bubble. You know, you get protected a little bit. Um, um, cause like, you know, some things in there that fake. You know, you, you know, we find out that your friends are not your real friends. Um, a lot of all that to deal with and then like I said it's just been times where you know trying to replicate the high what we just spoke about um, and yeah listen it's just been times where you have a drink um, which doesn't help <sighs> it just makes you worse but at the time you think it makes you better mm -hmm. and it doesn't um, yeah mate and you know I don't I, I, get, I don't mind saying you know I just been, there was a point you know where um, it weren't just I went on a I went on a bender basically, mm. and it was, uh, you know, it was it was I had a drink. It was it was it was a, it, I was drinking to not have fun. I was drinking to like to escape, escape. Um, and then it was and then then you know like that next day when you start sobering up and it's like that anxiety feeling and the only way to get out of it is to drink again because mm. you want to get back to escaping mm. and. It was, I, mate. I was getting up next day, mate. And I was going, I was going to the pub on my own, <laughs> just sat in a pub on my own, mm. just drinking, because um, I didn't want that, 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 like, I didn't want to come down to that low. And then I got to a point eventually where, like, I just, um, I said, I took, I took, just got a load of sleepers, a load of sleeping tablets, mate, and just took the full, full box of sleepers, and don't really understand what. My thought process was, I, I, I think it was, I just wanted to go to sleep. I just wanted a long sleep, if that's the best way. I, 
I, I can I can describe it as, um, like you said, yeah, I've, I'm very fortunate. I'm not going to sit here and say I'm not. You know, I'm lucky. I've worked hard, but I've had good things. Um, but yeah, there's still like I'm human, like anyone else. You know, it was it was a time where I didn't just didn't want to be here really, and 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 and, and for for a number of reasons, and like I said it was. But it was the drink. It was the drinking that started it, which mm. is it's is not, it's not, it's not, it's not. Nothing good comes from that. Mm. Do you know what I mean? There's only other things to follow. It makes it worse. Eventually, will make things worse. Listen, first of all, I think you're so brave mm. to just talk about what you talked about then, because yeah. that is. But someone like you, Danny, like the guy who's always been the coolest guy yeah. um, on the scene. Uh, you're a proper lads lad. For you to come on here and open up like that will inspire so many people. I know that's really important to you now, and especially coming out of football because. You've come out of football now, you've gone from, like you said, earning big salaries every single week to now uh, basically on this next phase of your career. And how old are you now? 36. 36, which is still young. Like you said, mm. for most people, that's coming into your prime. Yeah. And you are now going into this new world, yeah, where, like you said, you've been kind of mothered and, and like protected mm. in the Premier League. Whereas now you're coming out into this new world and it's new, right? And fair play to you. Like you're throwing yourself into stuff. You're quite savvy. You're a bit of a businessman. You're doing your meetings and doing a bit of punditry. You're making it work. Yeah. But I know it's it's different for you. And you want to now use your platform, don't you, to yeah. try and help raise awareness around this. What, what is kind of your purpose now with this? Yeah, ma yeah, it's massive. Awareness. Like I said, from a personal point of view, no one, no, that's the thing with football. They don't, or maybe other sports as well, they don't prepare you for this next phase of your life, which you just said in 36, it's young, it's people's primes, <laughs> you know what I mean? Where I, 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 it's this whole new world. So even but I, 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 I've, the things I've gone through or whatever I've felt, and like you said, self-sabotage, sometimes you, you might hate yourself um, or you blame like you blame yourself or whatever it is or you know, like emptiness. Mm. So, and I, I, I found recently that, you know, you know, helping, you know, certain charities. Um, and what I do is more and I need to do more. I mean, everyone can do more. Um, that That's fulfilling. You know, the stuff that I'm trying to do, you know, my own experiences with the with players that I was at, are out of contract, um, who, who get left on their own to keep themselves fit. I know I'm working hard to, for this camp in Manchester with the Premier League and the PFA. I'm really trying to get, put, push it where these players because I you know, being out of contract and not knowing when your next job is or your contract and trying to keep fit on your own or going to the gym that that affects your mental health and all that so even just from a sport point of view if I can make that happen mate that'll, that'll I'll put that up there mate with the medal mm -hmm. honestly mate if I can make this happen I will put that up there with winning the, the Premier League in terms of where I am at the moment yeah because I, I can really sense that you thrive mm -hmm. off helping other people yeah. Um, and it just comes really naturally to you, um, but it's. I find it easy. I think I find it easier helping other people and myself. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm being honest with you. But the thing I've is, actually never thought of it like that. But uh, yeah, maybe. Do you that. know what? I'm really like that. So sometimes, if I'm having a problem, um, I find it easier to go and post about it on social media and go, "I'm having a shit day today, guys." Not every day is perfect. And, I, and it's almost, someone said it's a bit like emotional broadcasting, but hey, as soon as I put it out to the universe and I know it's probably going to help someone else feel a little bit of relief hmm. and calmness because they know they're not alone, that automatically makes me feel better. I don't know what it is. Yeah, well, listen, no, I, mean, I don't know if you want me to say it. How many times have we probably, people won't even know this, mm. you know, because, yeah, just because we know each other a long time, you said obviously the last few years we've got closer, but, you know, people won't know that me and you have, have sat just us two in a room <laughs> and had a deep one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and and had a deep chat mm. and 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 and, it, and it's helped either what well both of us or either of us at the time. And mm. like I said, I think if, if you can do it, then it's it's hard to do it. Mm. But if you can, if you can, like you said, it it. it, it I just think it, it helps. I just think it's rare though, isn't it? Like obviously we're fortunate because we've had a, a good few deep chats now and we're quite vocal uh, as a set of lads sometimes. But I think it's really rare for men especially to get together in a room like this and just talk. Mm. And there's so much value that comes from it. And I feel like, especially you coming from such a male-orientated sport and that kind of lads mentality, 
what you're trying to do is going to have such a big impact. Um, so what is the next vision for you then over the next few years? Not sure, but like, it's just a quick one on that as well. Mm. Like, look what, obviously, your brother, mm. you know, Ryan and, and Chris, mm. you know, when they asked me to, you know, could I jump, you know, can I get involved in, you know, part of, of that walk, mate? First thing I could ever think of was, was, was yes. You know, we walked from, you know, Manchester all the way to town, you know, it was... And, ten and, marathons in ten days. Yeah, it? mate, it was amazing what he did and... You know, you know, I'm, my hat goes off to him for, for what he did. You know, him and Chris and the amount of people that joined in and got involved. And even just that day, I remember us all just walking and talking, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but well, what's next? You know, I said that. I said I'm trying to set up this camp for, for players, footballers, and um, just try and grow with myself. Like I said every day. Um, like I said, I'm luckily I'm away from that period of the time where... You know, the drinking was damaging me, you know, I said, and all the other stuff following. I've come away from that now. Um, you know, I said, I love the media. It makes me happy. You know, I love talking about football and trying to pass on my knowledge to other people, watching games, being at the pitch. Next best thing for me, mm. being on the pitch side at Old Trafford, you know, talking about the game. Like, I was at Newcastle recently. You know, the fans were so good welcoming me back, the fans at Newcastle and... Um, that, I love that. I love that side of things, but I've got to work hard on it. Like I said, it's something that I've got to work hard because it's not all new to me. Yeah, it's a new career path, and you've got to put the graft in mm. to get to where you want to be. But just talk to me about the size of the problem now with um, ex-professional footballers, because I think there's been some press recently. Is it about Craig Bellamy? He's just been declared yeah. bankrupt, and you hear some horror stories about mm. ex-footballers who basically have lost everything. Um, they're struggling with mental health. How big is the problem? I think, I think it's a big problem because I said with I think from what I've seen or read from the Bellamy situation, he's bankrupt now. He's probably earned millions. He you know, he trusted someone and it didn't work out. Um, I think when you come out of football, I think when you when you and so all of a sudden you stop getting paid. No, don't get me wrong. The pay is it's it's probably ridiculous. You know compared to. With nurses, you know, and, mm. and people that risk their lives every single day, um, you know, and teachers who are looking after twenty kids. You know what I mean? That become mm. invalid. You know what I mean? It is. It's 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 astronomical. But I think what happens is you you get used to that lifestyle, and when it has to change and stop and reduce, uh, maybe you made bad decisions. Um, being around twenty guys every day. You know, having the banter and all of a sudden you're on your own. I said, I wake up some days and I'm and I'm like, what, what do I do today? Mm. You know, because all I've done is been, I've been told what to do for 20 years. Mm. And now I'm like, right, woke up. So, you know, we found paddle, I found paddle, we all do paddle, little things that you're trying to find to give you the routine. Um, and I said, it, it's, it's, it's difficult for them. No one prepares them for it. You know, like little, little things we're going to laugh about this. Like, I, I realised I don't have a GP, right? <laughs> now, you're laughing, yeah? Well, I've had a doctor at the club for, for 20 years. And he's like, oh, sh shit, I, don't, I ain't got a GP. I'm, yeah. I don't feel well, what do I do? Oh. And it's so small, but I said it, that was just an example. It's probably a bit silly one, but yeah, he said it's, you, you know, everything gets done for you and then all of a sudden you're in this new world and... There they can be more help because he like said it's and and people not not everyone's got a good support network. Mm. Some people are on their own. Some people are in relationship problems or etc. And um, people don't have their ki uh, children or whatever to you know to that are there that love them. Mm. Um, so yeah, nothing. It's it's a. I don't know how it changes, but um, like I said if anything I can do to to help change. Yeah, I think it's really important what you're doing, and I think you're really well placed to do it because you've got the respect to people as well and. Um, I think it takes someone like you to make some noise around this. Um, so I think it's really powerful, bro. Right. Uh, one thing I'll say though, Danny, is like, are you proud of yourself? Because because I'm sitting here now and I, I'm proud of you, um, just from the outside looking in, of everything that you managed to achieve. And what I really find inspiring about what you've managed to achieve is, it sounds like, I remember there's times when you were down in Newcastle or you were in QBR, you almost, you was almost on your own. Yeah. Like, I know you've got a support system, but you've been a bit of a lone ranger, yeah. like in your own way. And you've kind of done this on you. You've had this amazing career and you've made it happen for yourself. 
You've been a grafter, you've trained mm. hard, and you've achieved all these trophies. And like you said, put the Premier League to one side. You got yourself up to, to the champ, uh, from the championship a couple of times. And are you proud of yourself? Because I think you should be. I don't, probably not. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't, I even you saying that there, like you're saying you're proud of me. I don't really like, I'm not, I'm not really good at taking compliments. Mm. Um, but I find it easier me giving you one. Um, but I, I don't, I, I don't. The answer is it's not. Yeah, mm. I've st um, still got a lot that I want to try and do, and what I want to. Listen, I look back and I know what some of the things I've done has been a dream, and like kids, millions of kids, what what would love to mm. do, and. You know what I mean? To lift that trophy, mate, it was, it was, you know, I cried my eyes out for hours at in Jamie Vardy's house, mm. just in the back garden, mate, just sat there for hours just crying. <laughs> because like, like you said, it was a big F you to a lot of things. You know, before we spoke about um, proving people wrong, I still feel like I'm doing that every day. Mm. I have to do it every day. You know, when, um, the yes, reason, answer to that's probably no. The reason why I ask is because, and I think I've just realised what both our problems are sometimes is that self-love. Mm. When you, you need to fall in love with yourself again. Yeah, yeah, probably. Because there's a massive part of you where you're not backing yourself like, and I know there's all these accolades and stuff, but it's part of you now where you yeah. think, you know what? You're on this journey now where you want to fall in love with the other side of Danny, the side that this side, the side where you're doing good for other people and everything else. And I think you're on that path now. Yeah. Um, but I think you should be proud of yourself, mate, because no, not that. many people will come on here today and talk about what you're doing. And even trying to do what you're doing, like in terms of raising awareness around stuff and just having that vulnerability and honesty. And I think like, I'm just proud to have you on, the, on, on this podcast, no, mate. Like, you, yeah. And you know what? You're just a, you are just a good, solid person. You've got a big heart. And it's rare for like, do you know what I mean? To find someone who's been in your position who now wants to reach back. Um, and I think it's really powerful. So I just want to say thank you. No, thanks. Um, and just start being proud of yourself, bro. Yeah, yes, I don't. I don't feel like people know the real me. You do. Mm. All the people close to me, and I think you've only just recently. Yeah. Probably because I've. Maybe but it's let, beautiful let to watch. In, it's you know beautiful I mean? to watch you now let people in. Yeah. And every person you speak to, like, you go up to them, and like, I, I see you watch you sometimes. You greet everybody with a smile yeah, and warmth, and try. and and. That's special, man. So just keep leaning into that because that's where you will start to fall in love with yourself again. But to end the podcast, what would you say now to young Danny? Like, what would be your biggest piece of advice? Oh, that's a big question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. Do you know what, mate? Probably... Do you know what? Probably just... Probably just let, talking a bit more than letting people in at the times, certain times. Probably rather than thinking I'm on my that. own and I can do it on my own. Yeah. Um, Always feeling like I can rely on myself, but then I always felt like I didn't want anyone else to let me down. I let myself down. So probably just like you said, at certain times as a youngster, whether I was 18 talking to Sir Alex or my parents at a certain age or my best mates or a girlfriend is however you're feeling at the time let them know because people don't like unless you tell them people don't know mm. and that's what I was going to say I think that's the biggest lesson I've got from this is the importance of like opening up because since you've done this over the last few years mm. I can see that that everybody's getting to see the real Danny and it's I beautiful so. to watch mate I hope so but bro thank you so much nah, man cheers, unbelievable mate thank you honestly we made nah, it happen listen, thank, thank you, you bro. Yeah, it's such a powerful question to ask yourself are you proud of yourself? Because I feel like when we are proud of ourselves, that's when we feel happy. And there's been times in my life when I've not felt like that. But I feel like I'm at a certain point now where I've got to that point. When I asked Danny that question, I could tell he was struggling and he, he, he clearly said no. But I know now he's on that journey where he's starting to fall in love with himself again. And it's weird, isn't it? Because we would put him on a pedestal of uh, winning so many different trophies, winning the Premier League, playing at Manchester United. And you would have thought they would have been super grateful and happy for who he is. But in actual fact, he's still struggling. And it takes work to get to that point. And the biggest kind of lesson I took from today's podcast is working on yourself, working on your mental health 
it takes time and it takes awareness. And Danny is definitely at that point now where he's, he's going to put the work in and he's going to reach back as well and help a lot of people along his way. So I just want to say thank you, Danny, for jumping on this podcast today. It was one of my favourites. And I just want to say thank you to you as well for continuously supporting, um, following and subscribing. Wherever you listen to your podcast, it really does make a difference. So please keep them coming. And don't forget to subscribe to YouTube as well. It's on the move and that's because of you guys. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. And we will be back next week with another inspirational guest on learning as I go.